Welcome back to Thoughts of Nature. Today we will take a journey back in time to the ancient landscapes of Ice Age Australia, where giants roamed and incredible creatures ruled the land. In this video, we'll embark on a captivating adventure to uncover the mysteries of Australia's megafauna, from towering giants to fearsome predators, and delve into their extraordinary world that existed thousands of years ago. Imagine a time when massive creatures wandered through vast grasslands, dense forests, and rugged outback terrain. These ancient beasts, some resembling familiar animals and others unlike anything seen today, shaped the ecosystems of Ice Age Australia and left an indelible mark on the continent's natural history. Join us as we unravel the secrets of five of Australia's most distinguished Ice Age megafauna, exploring their unique adaptations, behaviors, and interactions with the environment. From giant kangaroos to the marsupial lion, each creature has a story to tell and a role to play in the ancient tapestry of life. Let's begin by stepping into the world of Diprotodon, the largest marsupial to ever roam the ancient landscapes of Australia. Imagine encountering a creature resembling a modern-day wombat, but towering over you like a rhinoceros. Diprotodon was truly a titan of the Ice Age dominating the prehistoric Australian landscape with its massive size and formidable presence. From its impressive size to its unique adaptations, Diprotodon offers a captivating glimpse into the ancient ecosystems of Ice Age Australia. Diprotodon, often referred to as the giant wombat, was a colossal herbivore that roamed the ancient landscapes of Ice Age Australia. It belonged to a group of marsupials known as Diprotodontids, which also includes modern-day wombats and koalas. However, Diprotodon far surpassed its living relatives in size, reaching heights of up to two meters at the shoulder and weighing over two tons. One of the most striking features of Diprotodon was its massive skull, which housed a set of powerful jaws lined with large, grinding teeth. These teeth were well-suited for processing tough vegetation, allowing Diprotodon to feed on a variety of plants found in its habitat. Its robust limbs and sturdy body supported its immense bulk, enabling it to move with surprising agility despite its size. Diprotodon had a relatively short tail compared to its body size, and its fur was likely coarse and sparse, providing minimal insulation against the harsh Australian climate. Despite its resemblance to modern-day wombats, Diprotodon was far larger and more heavily built, making it one of the most imposing herbivores of its time. Diprotodon was primarily a herbivore, feeding on a diverse diet of vegetation including grasses, shrubs, and leaves. Its massive size and powerful jaws allowed it to graze on tough, fibrous plants that other herbivores might have struggled to consume. Diprotodon likely foraged for food both during the day and at night, taking advantage of the cooler temperatures and reduced risk of predation. In terms of habitat, Diprotodon was highly adaptable and inhabited a variety of environments across Ice Age Australia. It could be found in open woodlands, grasslands, and even wetlands, where it could access different types of vegetation and water sources. Despite its large size, Diprotodon was a relatively solitary animal, coming together only during mating seasons or when resources were particularly abundant. Diprotodon's size and strength likely afforded it some protection against predators, but it may have still fallen victim to large carnivores such as Thylacolio, the marsupial lion, or Megalania, the giant monitor lizard. Nevertheless, Diprotodon's formidable stature and adaptability allowed it to thrive in the diverse landscapes of Ice Age Australia, shaping the ecosystems in which it lived. The extinction of Diprotodon and other megafauna of the Pleistocene Epoch remains one of the most intriguing mysteries of Australian paleontology. While climatic shifts and environmental changes likely played a role, the timing and extent of human impact on the extinction of Diprotodon are subjects of ongoing debate among scientists. Some researchers propose that the arrival of Aboriginal Australians around 65,000 years ago may have contributed to the decline of Diprotodon populations through hunting or habitat modification. However, conclusive evidence linking human activity to the extinction of Diprotodon remains elusive, leaving the exact cause of its demise open to interpretation. Aboriginal rock art provides valuable cultural and archaeological evidence of Diprotodon's significance to Indigenous Australians. 
Depictions of Diprotodon, often alongside other megafauna, can be found in rock shelters, caves, and overhangs across Australia, dating back thousands of years. These artworks offer insights into indigenous beliefs, cultural practices, and interactions with the natural world. Some interpretations suggest that Diprotodon may have held spiritual or mythological significance for Aboriginal communities, serving as symbols of ancestral connections and traditional knowledge. Studying these ancient artworks helps researchers better understand the relationship between humans and megafauna in prehistoric Australia and the cultural legacy left by these magnificent creatures. Moving on from Diprotodon, let's journey into the realm of Megalania, the giant ripper lizard of ancient Australia. Imagine a creature resembling a modern Komodo dragon, but reaching lengths of over seven meters and weighing as much as a small car. Megalania was an intimidating apex predator that prowled the ancient Australian landscape during the Pleistocene epoch, wielding its sharp claws and powerful jaws with deadly precision. From its fearsome reputation, unique adaptations, and its role as a top predator, to its mysterious disappearance, Megalania captivates our imagination and challenges our understanding of Australia's ancient past. Megalania, the largest terrestrial lizard to have ever lived, was a formidable predator that dominated the ancient Australian landscape during the Pleistocene epoch. This apex predator was characterized by its massive size, robust build, and distinctive features. Standing at over seven meters in length and weighing as much as 1,000 kilograms, Megalania was a true giant among reptiles. Its long, muscular body was supported by powerful limbs armed with sharp claws, perfect for grasping and subduing prey. Its skull was equipped with a formidable array of teeth, including serrated edges, ideal for tearing flesh and crushing bones. One of the most distinctive features of Megalania was its elongated body, which allowed it to move with surprising agility despite its immense size. Its streamlined form and powerful muscles enabled it to pursue prey over long distances and navigate through a variety of terrains, from dense forests to open grasslands. Megalania's coloration and skin texture remain a subject of speculation among scientists, with some suggesting that it may have had a mottled or camouflage pattern to help it blend into its surroundings. Its large size and predatory nature made it a fearsome sight to behold, inspiring awe and fear in the creatures that shared its ancient world. Megalania was an apex predator, reigning supreme as one of the top predators in the ancient Australian ecosystem. Its formidable size, powerful jaws, and sharp claws made it a fearsome hunter capable of taking down prey much larger than itself. This giant lizard was an ambush predator, relying on stealth and patience to surprise its unsuspecting prey. Megalania would lie in wait, concealed among vegetation or rocky outcrops, before launching a swift and deadly attack. Its sharp claws and powerful jaws enabled it to deliver a lethal bite, inflicting devastating wounds on its victims. Believed to be akin to a giant Komodo dragon, it is thought they too may possess venomous saliva, which could be used to devastating effect when hunting its prey. They are thought to infect their prey with each bite they inflict and wait patiently for the toxins to take effect, with Megalania's excellent sense of smell leading right to the carcass of the later deceased prey for an easy meal. In terms of habitat, Megalania was highly adaptable and could be found in a variety of environments across Ice Age Australia. It inhabited dense forests, open woodlands, rocky outcrops, and even coastal areas where it could access different types of prey and water sources. Despite its immense size and formidable reputation, Megalania remained unknown to science until relatively recently. Fossil evidence of Megalania was first discovered in Australia in the late 19th century, sparking fascination and debate among paleontologists. The discovery of Megalania challenged existing perceptions of Australia's prehistoric fauna and underscored the importance of continued exploration and discovery in understanding the continent's ancient past. The extinction of Megalania remains a puzzle with various hypotheses proposed by researchers. Beyond human activity and climate changes, other factors might have contributed to its demise. One intriguing theory suggests that shifts in prey availability or competition with other apex predators could have played a significant role. 
Megalania's extinction could also be linked to changes in vegetation patterns or the loss of key habitats due to geological events or ecological shifts. Furthermore, disease outbreaks or shifts in predator-prey dynamics could have impacted Megalania populations. Exploring these alternative explanations sheds light on the complex ecological dynamics that shape the fate of this ancient reptilian predator. Next, we turn our attention to Genyornis, a fascinating creature that once roamed the ancient landscapes of Australia. Imagine encountering a bird towering over two meters tall with a powerful beak and robust legs adapted for running. Genyornis was one of the largest birds of the Pleistocene epoch, a true giant of the avian world. From its role as a key player in the ancient Australian ecosystem to its mysterious disappearance, Genyornis offers a captivating glimpse into the avian diversity of Ice Age Australia. Genyornis, colloquially known as the Demon Duck of Doom, was a massive flightless bird that inhabited the ancient landscapes of Australia during the Pleistocene epoch. Standing over two meters tall and weighing up to 500 kilograms, Genyornis was one of the largest birds of its time. Its distinctive features included a robust build, powerful legs, and a large hooked beak. The beak was well adapted for grasping and manipulating vegetation, as well as potentially for scavenging or even hunting small prey. Despite its formidable size, Genyornis likely had limited flight capabilities or was entirely flightless, relying instead on its powerful legs for mobility. Genyornis also possessed adaptations indicative of its role as a ground-dwelling bird. Its legs were long and sturdy, ideal for rapid running and covering long distances across the ancient Australian landscape. Fossil evidence suggests that Genyornis may have inhabited a variety of environments, including grasslands, woodlands, and even coastal regions. In terms of appearance, Genyornis likely had a relatively small head in proportion to its body, with a long neck and a compact torso. Its wings, although reduced in size, may have still retained some vestigial features. The plumage of Genyornis remains a subject of speculation, with some researchers suggesting it may have had a shaggy or feathery appearance, while others propose it may have been more streamlined or even partially featherless. Genyornis was a ground-dwelling bird that likely inhabited a variety of environments across Ice Age Australia. Fossil evidence suggests that it may have been found in grasslands, woodlands, and even coastal regions, demonstrating its adaptability to different habitats. As a large flightless bird, Genyornis relied primarily on its powerful legs for mobility. It was likely a fast runner, capable of covering long distances across the ancient Australian landscape. Its robust build and sturdy legs made it well-suited for traversing diverse terrains and foraging for food. Genyornis was likely a herbivore, feeding on a diet of vegetation such as leaves, fruits, seeds, and possibly even small animals or insects. Its large, hooked beak was well adapted for grasping and manipulating plant material, allowing it to efficiently consume a wide range of plant species. Genyornis may have lived in small groups or flocks, foraging together for food and providing protection against predators. Its size and formidable beak may have served as deterrence to potential predators, although it likely faced threats from carnivores such as Thylacolio and Megalania. The closest living relatives of Genyornis are believed to be the Raytites, a group of large flightless birds that includes the ostrich, emu, cassowary, kiwi, and rhea. Despite their geographic separation, genetic studies and morphological comparisons suggest that these modern Raytites share a common ancestor with Genyornis. Among the modern Raytites, the emu, Dromaeus novae hollandiae, is often considered to be the closest living relative of Genyornis due to similarities in skeletal morphology and ecological niche. Both Genyornis and emus are large flightless birds adapted for life on the ground with long legs and powerful feet for running. They also share certain features of the skull and beak, although Genyornis was significantly larger in size compared to the emu. Studying the morphology, behavior, and genetics of modern raytites provides valuable insights into the evolutionary history and ecological adaptations of Genyornis and other extinct giant birds of the Pleistocene epoch. While modern raytites may not perfectly represent the exact appearance or behavior of Genyornis, they offer important comparative data for understanding the evolutionary relationships and ecological roles of ancient avian species. 
Now, we'll dive into the world of Thylacolio, the marsupial lion of ancient Australia. Imagine encountering a fearsome predator with the body of a lion, but the pouch of a kangaroo. Thylacolio was not your typical big cat. It was a unique and formidable carnivore that prowled the ancient Australian landscape during the Pleistocene epoch. Watch as we uncover the mysteries of Thylacolio, exploring its fearsome anatomy, predatory behavior, and role as a top predator in Ice Age Australia. From its powerful jaws to its retractable claws, Thylacolio was a true apex predator that ruled the prehistoric outback with strength and cunning. Thylacolio, commonly known as the marsupial lion, was a remarkable carnivorous marsupial that inhabited the ancient landscapes of Australia during the Pleistocene epoch. Unlike any living predator today, Thylacolio possessed a unique combination of features that set it apart as a formidable apex predator. One of the most striking features of Thylacolio was its robust build and muscular frame. It had a stocky body with powerful limbs, well-suited for grappling with prey and delivering lethal strikes. Its forelimbs were particularly strong, equipped with retractable claws similar to those of modern-day big cats. These claws were likely used to immobilize prey and deliver precise crushing blows. Thylacolio's skull was another impressive feature, with strong jaw muscles and large slicing teeth adapted for shearing flesh and crushing bones. Its bite was incredibly powerful, capable of inflicting fatal wounds on even the largest prey animals. Additionally, Thylacolio had a unique dental structure that allowed it to deliver a slicing motion with its jaws, further enhancing its hunting efficiency. In terms of size, Thylacolio was comparable to a modern-day lioness, with adult individuals weighing around 100 to 130 kilograms. However, its anatomy and predatory adaptations set it apart as a distinctly different type of predator, occupying a niche similar to that of big cats in other parts of the world. Overall, Thylacolio was a formidable and highly specialized predator that played a crucial role in the ancient Australian ecosystem. Its unique combination of physical characteristics and hunting strategies made it a top predator in Ice Age Australia, shaping the dynamics of predator-prey interactions and contributing to the diversity of life in this ancient landscape. Thylacolio, the marsupial lion, was an apex predator that inhabited a range of habitats across Ice Age Australia. Fossil evidence suggests that it may have been found in various environments, including woodlands, forests, and open grasslands, demonstrating its adaptability to different ecosystems. As a top predator, Thylacolio was a formidable hunter with a unique set of predatory behaviors and strategies. It likely relied on stealth and ambush tactics to surprise its prey, using its powerful limbs and retractable claws to immobilize and dispatch animals much larger than itself. Thylacolio's strong jaw muscles and large slicing teeth enabled it to deliver lethal bites, incapacitating its victims with precision and efficiency. Thylacolio's hunting prowess may have allowed it to target a wide range of prey, including large herbivores such as Diprotodon and Procoptodon, as well as smaller mammals and reptiles. Its ability to bring down such diverse prey likely contributed to its success as a top predator in Ice Age Australia. In terms of social behavior, Thylacolio was likely a solitary hunter, although it may have occasionally formed mating pairs or small family groups. Its territorial nature and solitary lifestyle allowed it to minimize competition with other predators and maximize its hunting success. Despite its formidable hunting abilities, Thylacolio eventually went extinct along with many other megafauna of the Pleistocene epoch. The exact cause of its extinction remains uncertain, but factors such as climate change, habitat loss, and human hunting pressure may have all played a role in its demise. Overall, Thylacolio was a fascinating and highly specialized predator that played a crucial role in the ancient Australian ecosystem. Its behaviors and interactions with other species shaped the dynamics of predator-prey relationships and contributed to the diversity of life in Ice Age Australia. Thylacolio's unique anatomy sets it apart as a highly specialized predator among marsupials. Despite its common name, the marsupial lion, Thylacolio was not closely related to modern lions or other placental carnivores. Instead, it belonged to a group of extinct marsupials known as the Thylacolionidae, which evolved unique predatory adaptations independently of placental carnivores. 
Thylacolio's evolutionary lineage traces back to the early Miocene epoch, around 24 million years ago, when the first members of the Thylacolionidae appeared in Australia. Over millions of years, these marsupials underwent significant adaptations to their predatory lifestyle, culminating in the emergence of Thylacolio during the late Pleistocene epoch. One of the most remarkable aspects of Thylacolio's anatomy is its convergence with placental carnivores, such as lions and tigers, despite its marsupial lineage. This convergence is evident in Thylacolio's robust skull, powerful jaws, retractable claws, and specialized teeth for slicing flesh. These features allowed Thylacolio to fulfill a similar ecological niche to that of placental carnivores, demonstrating the remarkable evolutionary flexibility of marsupials in adapting to diverse environments and ecological roles. While Thylacolio's closest living relatives are other marsupials, such as kangaroos, koalas, and wombats, its evolutionary lineage diverged from these groups early in Australia's marsupial evolutionary history. Despite this divergence, Thylacolio shares certain anatomical and behavioral similarities with modern marsupials, providing insights into the evolutionary relationships among Australia's diverse mammalian fauna. Finally, let's delve into the fascinating world of Procoptodon, the giant kangaroo that roamed ancient Australia. Imagine encountering a kangaroo towering over you, reaching heights of up to 2 meters and weighing as much as 200 kilograms. Procoptodon was not your average kangaroo, it was a colossal herbivore that left a significant mark on the prehistoric landscape of Ice Age Australia. Procoptodon, often referred to as the giant short-faced kangaroo, was a remarkable herbivorous marsupial that inhabited the ancient landscapes of Australia during the Pleistocene epoch. It stood out among its modern kangaroo relatives due to its impressive size and distinctive physical characteristics. One of the most striking features of Procoptodon was its towering stature reaching heights of up to two meters at the shoulder. This made it one of the largest kangaroos to have ever existed, dwarfing even the largest extant kangaroo species. In addition to its height, Procoptodon possessed a robust build with muscular limbs and a sturdy body adapted for supporting its immense bulk. Unlike modern kangaroos, Procoptodon had a shortened, stocky face, giving it a unique appearance among its marsupial relatives. Its skull was characterized by a broad muzzle and large nasal openings, which likely played a role in enhancing its sense of smell, a crucial aspect for foraging and navigating its environment. Procoptodon's limbs were well adapted for both mobility and agility, despite its large size. It had long, powerful hind limbs with elongated foot bones, allowing for efficient bipedal hopping, a characteristic mode of locomotion for kangaroos. Its forelimbs were shorter, but still robust, equipped with sharp claws that were likely used for grasping vegetation or defending against predators. In terms of coloration, Procoptodon's fur is thought to have varied depending on its environment, ranging from reddish-brown to grayish-brown hues. This camouflage likely helped it blend into different habitats, providing protection from potential predators, such as Thylacolio or Megalania. Procoptodon's imposing size, robust build, and unique facial structure set it apart as one of the most iconic megafauna of Ice Age Australia. Its physical characteristics reflect adaptations to the diverse environments it inhabited and its role as a dominant herbivore in the ancient Australian ecosystem. Despite its imposing size, Procoptodon was likely a relatively agile and adaptable creature capable of traversing various habitats in search of suitable food sources and shelter. One key aspect of Procoptodon's behavior was its reliance on bipedal hopping as its primary mode of locomotion. Its long, powerful hind limbs and elongated foot bones were well suited for efficient hopping, allowing it to cover long distances across the open grasslands and woodlands of Ice Age Australia. This hopping behavior likely enabled Procoptodon to evade predators and efficiently forage for food, while also conserving energy. In terms of habitat, Procoptodon inhabited a variety of environments, including open grasslands, woodlands, and scrublands. Its ability to adapt to different habitats suggests that it was a generalist herbivore, capable of exploiting a wide range of vegetation types for sustenance. This adaptability likely contributed to its success as one of the most widespread and abundant megafauna species of its time. 
Procoptodon's behavior may have also included social interactions within its own species. While specific details of its social structure are speculative, it's possible that Procoptodon lived in small groups or loose aggregations, particularly during mating seasons or when resources were particularly abundant. These social interactions may have provided benefits such as improved foraging efficiency, protection against predators, or opportunities for mating and raising offspring. Procoptodon coexisted with indigenous Australian populations for thousands of years before its extinction. Aboriginal rock art, which dates back thousands of years, often depicts various animals, including megafauna like Procoptodon. These depictions provide insights into indigenous perceptions of the natural world and may suggest that Procoptodon held cultural significance for Aboriginal communities. The presence of Procoptodon in rock art indicates that indigenous people were aware of these animals and may have interacted with them in some capacity, whether through hunting, storytelling, or spiritual beliefs. Indigenous Australians were skilled hunters and gatherers who utilized various resources from their environment for survival. While there is no direct evidence of Procoptodon hunting by indigenous people, it is plausible that they targeted these large marsupials for food, tools, or other purposes. The size and abundance of Procoptodon would have made them attractive prey for aboriginal hunters, particularly during times of resource scarcity. Overhunting, along with various environmental factors such as climate change and loss of habitat, are thought to be the leading causes of Procoptodons and other Australian megafauna's eventual extinction. That's all for this video. If you've learned something new, hit the like button and share with your friends. You could also subscribe for more answers to your thoughts of nature. Please leave a comment for what you would like to learn about next. Thank you.